How's it going everyone? It's Sam. Today we have some massive news. I want to hit on it. I'm not even going to do the whole introduction. Just know that there are links underneath the video in case you want to support. Also hit subscribe. It definitely helps out the channel. So Bitcoin is around 22,900, right around that 200 week moving average that we've been bouncing off of. You can see here that we're just right above it. Uh, typically we have not seen it go underneath and then above and then back underneath after we've closed above it. So it's going to be really important to hold that support, but don't be surprised if we do fall below it. There's always a first time for everything. Now, there's some news today. Bank of England launches biggest interest rate hike in 27 years as inflation soars. They raised by 50 basis points. We know that this was coming. This was expected. Still, though, it is historic. We also have the weekly jobless claims raised to 260,000 ahead of non-farm payrolls report. So this is the largest that we've seen in nine months. Uh, this is kind of bullish in a way because it shows a weakening job market, which sucks for everyone that's trying to find a job. But also it means that the Fed is less likely to continue raising rates, especially with everything else that we've seen, uh, with everything else that's happening. Now, with that in mind, we do have the inflation data coming out in six days. Next Wednesday, uh, we do have that coming out. So pay attention to that. Be ready for that. Now, the market here today in the stock market is a little bit mixed, uh, pretty much just slightly down. We were up a little bit earlier today, but we do have good news for crypto investors. Coinbase partners with BlackRock to create new access points for institutional crypto investing. So now they are working together to help institutional investors now be able to access crypto all on Aladdin, which is their uh, BlackRock's institutional investment management platform. They already work with 13,000 uh, different clients, institutional clients, that's Coinbase. But now with BlackRock, it looks like they might have access to a lot more. Now, this is so important because BlackRock is the world's largest financial asset manager, and they're starting with only crypto. They're only gonna offer crypto through this platform. Now, this is really big news, because again, BlackRock is the largest asset manager in the world. Now, it's not just BlackRock that's allowing clients to get access to crypto. We also know Fidelity is doing that as well. And part of it is because they know that they can make money, but part of it is because there's a lot of demand and they know that their clients can make money with this and want to be able to invest in this way over time. Fidelity is a true Bitcoin believer and have been mining for eight years or started mining eight years ago. BlackRock is a little bit harder to gauge, but the fact is they're just in the business of making money. And this is great because again, more adoption happens as time goes on, right? As more and more people buy, as more and more people take up positions, more and more people understand what crypto is, the fact is the price does go up. Now this isn't necessarily going to happen right away. It will take time, but it's just one of those things that silently happens in the background where larger and larger uh, groups of people get access to crypto and start buying and holding and then again it pushes up the price. Coinbase really liked this news. You can see over the last month Coinbase is up 67%. Just today though, it's up 15%. It was up even higher earlier. It was up like 26% on this news that they're working with BlackRock. Now Coinbase has moved a lot on this news but Bitcoin in the cryptocurrency market has not. Obviously, it's something that's just going to work in the background and we're going to have more buying pressure. And eventually, eventually it will push up the price, but no one's really taking this into account. Now, I want to talk about something. Uh, I might start including it on the channel, kind of like a, a little dose of hope or a little dose of hopium, uh, whatever you want to call it. Let me know if you like these kinds of things underneath the video. But right now, we're in a bear market. I think it's pretty obvious. Bitcoin has bounced off 17800 and... Uh, we know that when the Fed pivots, we're going to see assets, especially risky assets, move back up in price. Now, with that in mind, if we just get to the old highs for Bitcoin, that is about a 3x. If we get to the old highs on Ethereum, that's again about a 3x. If we get to the old highs on some of these other smaller cryptos, though, it's much more than that. For Cardano, it's about 6x. For Solana, about a 6, 7x. Some of these other cryptos, even more. Now, with that in mind though, we're just talking about the old highs. If we take some of these smaller cryptos, some of these other layer ones that have promise, and we say, what would they hit if they hit Ethereum's market cap, even now, like at the at the midpoint of the bear market or the beginning of the bear market, right? $200 billion. If Solana went up to that, or if Cardano went up to that, that would be a significant jump from here, right? About a 15X for Solana, about a 12X for Cardano. If we look at Polygon, even more than that, 
what's that, a 25X, 26X from here. And then what if they hit Ethereum's old market cap, the peak of the bull market, about $600 billion. That is crazy to think about, but it's also possible. That is almost a 50X for Solana, a 40X for Cardano. And when you think about Polygon, it's almost 100X. Now, I am not saying to go out and buy all these smaller cryptocurrencies, now we'll take a look at how much you could make investing today if we hit some of those old numbers. Now keep in mind, again, cryptocurrencies can fall a lot from here. They could fall 50%, right? These different smaller cryptos and you could have gotten an extra 2x. But the fact is, if you hold and you actually believe in it and it actually comes back, right? It actually makes it through the bull, uh, well, to the bull market from the bear market. The fact is that even if it goes up and down, it really doesn't affect you too much as long as it does well in the long term. Now, let's say you invested $1,000 into these different projects here today, and you decided that uh, you would spend $3,000 overall. Well, this is kind of a, I'd say a bullish scenario, but not very bullish, kind of like a more bearish bullish scenario. Let's say Cardano went and got to uh, just twice its old market cap. So we would have a 6x to the previous high and then another 2x from there, which would give you a 12x overall to twice its old market cap, about $6 per uh, Cardano. That would be about where Ethereum is today. That's about the same market cap. Solana, let's say Solana did nothing over the time that you invested over the next like three years, let's say, or two years uh, into the next bull run. And then Polygon went to zero. Well, your $3,000 would turn into $13,000. So that's still a great return, right? About a four and one third X. Now from there, let's say that we did something a little bit more bullish, right? Ethereum's market cap back at the end of the bull run, Solana was able to hit that. Again, that would be about a 50 X. Let's say Cardano just got to its all, uh, its all time high of about $3. And let's say Polygon again went to zero. Your $3,000 would then turn into 56,000. And then let's take the most bullish scenario here. Again, not trying to sling too much hopium, but Cardano, let's say it got to 2x its old all-time high. So again, about where Ethereum is now. And this is, again, during the next bull run. And then let's say Solana did the exact same thing. It doubled from where it was last all-time high. And then Polygon, let's say it did get up to Ethereum's market cap at the peak of the bull run. Let's say all of a sudden people start using Polygon and a lot of people start buying it. Well, that again is about a 90X from here. So your 3,000 would, would turn into 118,000. Now this isn't me saying to go put all your crypto or all your money into some of these smaller projects because again, some of them won't make it out. Um, but that is just putting some numbers behind it. Now, personally, I'm buying Bitcoin because it has a much easier path to a 10X than some of these other cryptos because there is more volatility. There's also a lot more risk in these other cryptos. Bitcoin is really in its own asset class and I am happy to sit here and take a 10X with a little bit less risk on the majority of my money. But that's also because I know that we could go back bearish and fall down even further, in which case I would have accumulated Bitcoin, which would go down less than a lot of these other smaller cryptocurrencies. And then I would possibly move out some of my crypto from Bitcoin into some of these smaller cryptocurrencies to be able to play that arbitrage. Now, with that in mind, my goals aren't your goals. So if you want to accumulate and you feel strongly about these other altcoins, you can definitely do that. I have some of these altcoins still. And the fact is, if we do go a little bit further, I probably will be accumulating some of these cryptos. Now I will be spreading my buys out. I'm not going to just put everything into one crypto, right? I think it's important to spread out the risk because some of these cryptos won't be around in five or 10 years. So keep that in mind. Now let me know your thoughts on this underneath the video. Now again, you can check out links underneath the video like to Bitchit and to Marjax, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.